Hello and welcome along to another episode of My Football Story from the Honest Football Podcast. Each week we talk to someone involved in a professional game about their love for football, their career in a professional game and the various experiences they've had throughout their career. This week we talk to Keston Davis, currently a central defender for the New Saints, but a man with an interesting backstory, particularly in his youth career. Keston started out in a Swansea academy at a very early age, his hometown club, but then moved on to Fulham before coming back to Swansea at under-16s. We talk about changing academies at a young age and the reasons for doing so, and the other opportunities that presented themselves at the time. And then upon his return to Swansea, we talk about being part of an incredible youth team, as well as the chance for opportunities in the first team, before loan spells at Yeovil and Notts County in English lower leagues. We then talk about his current move to the New Saints, getting the opportunity to play in the Champions League and Europa League for the Welsh club, and the differences in standard and styles between the Welsh Premier League and English lower league football. Keston was also an under-21 international for Wales and has a depth of experiences to talk about. And it's a really interesting insight from someone from a unique area of the game, and of course playing in a country at present that we haven't yet covered in the podcast. So if you do enjoy this one, please put a thumbs up on it. Let us know down in the comments what you think of Keston's story so far. And subscribe to the channel and turn those notifications on below for weekly episodes from this interview series, as well as match day vlogs and topical podcasts too. But this is Keston Davis' footballing story. We can't thank him enough for joining us again. And hopefully you'll enjoy this one as much as we did. Okay, so I'm delighted to be joined by Keston now, who's got quite an interesting football story. So let's start from the very beginning, as we do with any guest. We ask about your first football in memory, be it watching on TV as a fan, going to a stadium, playing in the garden. What's the first thing you remember about the game? Not so much the first thing I remember, but the, the biggest thing that sticks in my head was when Swansea were playing Knott's Forest. And at the time, I couldn't get tickets to go to the game. Yeah. And I remember sitting uh, in the lounge living room with my, with my dad and we were watching the game. And that was surreal when Darren Partley played that ball from the halfway line um, to make it, I think it was 3-1 or 2-1, I can't remember. But that feeling that Swansea just got promoted was just unbelievable. I'll never, ever, ever forget that feeling. But I'd say the, the, first, the first game that I ever went to was like Buffalo memory. Uh, would be when Swansea played Carlisle yeah. and obviously Lee Trundle and I can't really remember the game off, off the top of my head to be honest but I remember being at the Millennium Stadium and I was only, I can't remember how old I was at the time but I remember trying to peek over people's shoulders everyone was standing <laughs> up but yeah it was, uh, that was probably my first memory of, of, of a game and obviously you go down the Betch field, down to Swansea and stuff went down there a few times but they like big memories I think I was young at the time so I think the biggest memory would be would be the Carlisle game Perfect I mean Lee Trundle's not a bad introduction to football for anyone I don't think to be fair Oh no Trunds is uh, even now I've played against him we played a like a friendly game against he was playing for Flesley I think Yeah. and oh, the tricks he can do the things he can do with the ball and he's like 43 now or something Yeah. Like, it's frightening it's unbelievable <laughs> Even now, like, and then talk to me about your first competitive football experience because obviously you went from young supporting watching Swansea on the TV to at eight years old you were involved in the academy, and we'll talk about your moves during your academy years. But how did you get into Swansea to start with? It was a weird one actually because um, I was I think I was about five or six at the time, and my dad actually took like a local team. Yeah. I was about maybe four or five and he took a local team that were like say six and I remember him taking me along and I just I'd come on that like half time or something and and some some games I'd score a few goals and anyway I got um I got asked when I was about five or six to play for Cardiff. Yeah. So that's how it started. I actually joined joined Cardiff as a six year old. Yeah. I think I think I was playing in um like a tournament. And a Swan scout came on to my dad, and I must have been seven at the time. And it was like an under eight tournament, so it was like an older age tournament. Yeah. And I actually went for the trial for Swansea a year early, and I, and they didn't know I was only seven or something, or I was a year younger than what I was meant to be. So I actually got let go then. They said, "Oh, look, you're gonna have to come back next year. We don't offer, we're not allowed to take players under the age of eight or something at the time." So anyway, I was playing for Cardiff, and then Swansea obviously. The next year, they come on to me and said, oh, look, we'd like you to come 
for trials and stuff. And then that's how it started. I remember going down, I don't know if you know Swansea well, there's a place near the beach called Ashley Road. They they held the trials there. Yeah. Obviously, I stayed at Swansea for a few years. I'm sure we'll come on to my journey anyway, so I'll leave it at that. Well, that's the thing I wanted to ask next. Obviously, growing up locally, being involved in the academy at a club that you're watching on TV, and then at 11, a kind of bizarre move coming along where you go to London and go and join Fulham's academy. So I'm interested to know how that came about, how you made the decision to change country at a very young age. I know it's not too yeah. far, but change country. And what brought the move about? So when I was about uh, 11, that's one I was playing for, like playing for the under 11s, I was playing for the under 12s, sometimes play for the under 13s. Like it was kind of playing between three teams. Yeah. So I, I would think I was 11 at the time. And uh, I remember a coach pulling me in one day and saying, oh, I'm putting you back down to the under 11s. You've not been doing so well. And I was only 11. Right? It was a lot to take on. <laughs> and um, my dad was in the, the, the meeting at the time and, and didn't agree with it at all. But basically, three weeks prior to, prior to the, this meeting, a scout of Aston Villa came on to my dad and said, uh, oh, look, if anything, take my number. If anything happens to Swansea, give me a ring. So when we had this meeting, my dad's first thought was, right, I'm going to call this guy from Aston Villa. So we spoke to him on the phone. He said, look, we'd love to have you come up here, see what the facilities are like, and then we'll, we'll, we'll get something in concrete to, to have you for, for two years or something. But yeah. They, they wanted me to to travel from home. So I was only 11 at the time, so it would have been a lot for me to take on, to like leave, go leave all my friends and stuff. And I was a bit like, oh, I don't know. My mum and dad did, decided that it wouldn't be the best thing. So anyway, that when I was, I'd left Swansea, then I was going every weekend, I'd go to a different club. So I, I went to numerous clubs, Man United, Man City, Leicester, Aston Villa, Stoke City, just trial and follow them. I went to loads yeah. and loads of different clubs. So this went on for about a year, 18 months. So I, my dad had spoke to like an agent who then became a good family friend who was Glenn Leather and his name is. He is ex-professional, played for Leeds in Champions League, yeah. uh, but li lives in Leicester, so uh, lives in Tlesley. So I was training with him and playing for all these clubs on, on a weekend. And then when I was about 13, uh, there was a, a guy at, at Fulham who uh, Malcolm and Elias said, we're starting a schooling program. So my dad, we, we sat down, my mum and dad, and had a conversation with him. And they offered a, a schooling program that was, you'd go to the comprehensive school there, and then you do uh, a morning and train in the afternoon. So it was perfect. So anyway, I, I, obviously Fulham came about and it was the best club at the time, academy-wise. God knows how many years of the Premier League football that they were playing. <laughs> so it was it was just the, the, the best thing. And obviously, I left Swansea and I had no ties anywhere. So I made the decision. I, I, I went and lived with um, like a host family. And then I was there then until, until the move came back from with Swansea. But the best thing I ever did was, was leave home. It, like, obviously... As a young age, you like, oh, I want to play football, I want to play football. But the, I, I missed out on a lot in terms of like growing up and my childhood with my friends and stuff. But I gained so much experience, and I've met Alex Ferguson, I've met Martin Yall at young ages. I've yeah. shared the pitch with Danny Murphy. I've trained with Han Hangeland, Simon Davis used to because we were both Welsh, you would always take time to speak to me, Stephen Sidwell, like, you would never get that, that, the opportunity to speak to them people at, the, at such a young age. I was 14 at the time, going into an environment like that. But I think leaving Swansea, they, they weren't what they are today, they weren't then. Yeah. So we were, we were playing games on like, uh, like horse pitches. The grounds weren't great. We were traveling 6.30 in the morning by bus. And then you go to Fulham and you're playing the likes of Chelsea, Arsenal, Liverpool, and you're doing overnight stays the night before. It was just professional from the first team down to like the end of tens. They everybody did the same thing. So yeah, it was an unbelievable experience and something that I was so so glad I did. 
I guess that's the the thing. I mean, you sort of answered my next question, which was, was it hard to move away from home? You saying that you gained so much more from it, but then based on that, what was made the decision to come back to Swansea a few years later? Was it your decision? Was it the club's decision? How did it come about then? So it was weird actually because Swansea, I wasn't actually didn't have nothing to do with Swansea at the time. So Fulham had offered me, I think it was a scholarship and Leicester offered me a scholarship and a professional contract yeah. and Stoke City offered me scholarship, professional contract and so did Aston Villa. So at the time, Swansea weren't in the picture. And then it, weird, my dad was obviously from Swansea and knew the chairman, Hugh Jenkins. He, yeah. They did work together years and years ago. So my dad was in a bar once and Hugh Jenkins was in the bar and my dad started speaking and whatever and Hugh asked how I was doing. And in, the, in this time I hadn't decided where I was going to go. Was I going to go to Fulham, Aston Villa, Leicester? I didn't know where I wanted to go. So I was still playing for Fulham but had all these had options that I didn't know where I wanted to go. And then basically within... My dad had obviously spoke to Hugh Jenkins and said and then... Within a two or three days, the academy manager at Swansea rang my dad and said, oh, listen, we'd, we'd love to have Keston. We'll match the offers that you've been given. It's just be down to him what he wants to do. So I, we sat down with my dad and we reviewed every decision, uh, every option. And Swansea came out on, on top, really, because I was earning the same money. The club was going in the right direction. I would have played. I was playing for the under-23s. Or under twenty ones it was at the time, so it was a, a good pathway into the first team, which is what I wanted. And then I, I made the decision. I said I'd, I'd done two or three years away from home. Uh, I thought it was the right time to come home. And obviously, everything was was the same as what it would be if I went to Aston Villa or Leicester. It was just I was being at home and I was getting the same coaching as what I would anywhere else. Yeah. Uh, and the opportunity seemed to be greater than what it was anywhere else. So, yeah, I ultimately made the decision to come back to Swansea. And then, I guess, Swansea, as you mentioned, you came back at a time where the club were hugely on the up and going through the leagues and probably around that time were starting to get into Europe, winning trophies and all sorts, which was completely alien at the time. Yeah. But then talk to me about how it was further down, because obviously in a Welsh youth team, you're playing in the FA Welsh Youth Cup, despite being in the English League, and you had huge success in that. You were in a really successful under 23s or under 21 side. So that must have been a pretty good stage for you because you were winning nearly every week. Yeah, I mean, there was times when I when I first signed for Swansea, was it the a good decision, wasn't it? But then when it, within about the first six months of me being at Swansea as a, as a youth team player, you could tell something was going to happen because the players that we had, uh, I remember Joe Roden, Dan James coming through, even players like you, Owen Jones, I don't know if you heard of him. Owen was exceptional, score week in, week out. So we had a lot of players, Connor Robertson in that team as well. We had a lot of players who, even at a youth team level, were going to kick on. Yeah. You could tell, you could tell it, the feeling, you couldn't, I couldn't describe the feeling that something, all these players were going to kick on and we were going to do something good. I think the, my second year scholar, we played against Chelsea in the FA Youth Cup. That was a wake-up call because we we've been doing well in the league, uh, but we were only playing. We weren't playing top top teams. We were yeah. playing the likes of Charlton, still decent teams, but not top level teams like Charlton, West uh, West Sheffield Wednesday, West Brom. But then we played in the FA Youth Cup. I think it was the quarter final, and we got absolutely battered by Chelsea, and it, everyone just went they were good. But yeah. then they had the likes of Dom Solanke, Tammy Abraham. Jeremy Bogard, Jay Clark Soller, <laughs> all these players are just yeah. different level. But yeah, I suppose as the, as the years went on, Swansea were the first team to do an unbelievable. It didn't seem like there was opportunities, but the way the youth team was going in the year 23s were going, they'd be stupid not to allow us opportunities because we were playing so well. So I think in the Premier League, obviously you had Ollie McBurney who had the opportunity. Sorry, with our under-23s team, we had an exceptional team everywhere all over the park you could have played two different players <laughs> and they, they they would have done the job yeah. like we, we had two starting right backs we had two starting left backs four centre halves and everybody would come in and be fine to play wherever 
but yeah, that season was was unbelievable. We just could not stop winning. I was just going to ask, based on that, obviously you mentioned how well you guys were doing in the under twenty threes, but even some of the players that you mentioned there have had to go elsewhere to get football. Do you felt like you got the opportunity you perhaps deserved in the first team? When Swansea got relegated, that's when things started to change. Yeah. Uh, I think investors pulled a lot of money. You could see the the twenty threes were could have played a lot of them players could have played in the Premier League. Yeah. And at the time Swansea weren't doing so well, but there was an opportunity that they could have stayed in the Premier League. It wasn't like they were relegated, they were down and out. So they would I think if that was the case, a lot of more players would have made their debuts in Premier League. Yeah. But I think there was still a chance that they could have stayed up. So I don't think they wanted to play younger players and yeah. McBurney I think got a little 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there, didn't really make his start or debut or whatever until the following season. But yeah, I, I think opportunity-wise in the last 18 months, two years, have been second to none. You, you can see that it, it's really shown. you got Joe Roden, who's going to be in the Premier League in two years, Dan James, who's at Man United, the Ollie McBurney, Premier League, do you know what I mean? That George Byers will be on his way to the Premier League, I think. Connor Roberts, there's there's so many players now that are coming through. Ben Cabango, like yeah, the the list doesn't stop. <laughs> and obviously, all these boys were under 23s and and sometimes younger than us, but then they'd still come into our team and do a job. So you just knew that before sooner rather than later they had to put younger players in, otherwise, like these boys were going to go elsewhere. I guess the next thing for for you is the other bit of Swansea was the, particularly that last Premier League season, like you mentioned, is. For the first time, probably, Swansea started going through managers incredibly quickly, whereas normally you've been very settled in that sense. Did that have an impact on you? And did you worry that that was going to affect your opportunities? Because obviously the managers were then under such pressure to work so quickly and get results. Yeah, I mean, a big one for me was when Paul Clement came in. Uh, I had a good relationship with Paul. He, he gave, I didn't make my debut for the first team, but I did in pre-season. It was a game against Barnet and always got on well with, with Paul. He always wanted to push me and he was he was really good, really good to me. Obviously I remember I remember it like it was yesterday. I went into his office and I said, Look, I said I want to go on loan. He said, Yeah, I want you to go on loan as well. He said I want you to go and get first team games and come back and we'll see where you are. And I'd gone to Yeovil, come back and he got the sack. So <laughs> <laughs> So you, you, you kind of as a young player, you want a manager who sees the development from start to finish. Like, for instance, uh, Michael Laudrup saw Ben Davis near enough to start to finish because he, he got the opportunity to play Ben, yeah, see Ben in preseason, played Ben when, when, when Tails got, Neil Taylor got injured, and that was his process, do you know what I mean? A lot of players, you don't get the opportunity now. You don't get the chance to show managers they could say, oh, in six months, he, we'll have a look at him in six months, see how he does on loan. But like I say, I'd gone to Yeovil, come back, and the manager got the sack, and yeah. you're back to square one again. So, yeah. And managers, like you say, managers need results. They need to win games, and that's bottom line what the main thing that they, they need to do. Absolutely. I guess if we move on to something you mentioned there, which was your first loan spell at Yeovil, now, if I've got this right, your first professional start was probably a bit of a rude awakening at my club, unfortunately. Because what's oh, your yeah. professional debut at Luton in the 8-2 game? Yeah, it was. That was um, my professional debut. How was that playing against two, champ- two strikers who are now obviously in the championship in a side that was struggling a bit at the time anyway? They were on their way down. They couldn't name a full bench that day. And at half-time, yeah. it's five. So talk to me about your... Emotions when you knew you were going to make your professional debut and then how quickly it changed when the match started. Yeah, so this is actually quite a weird one. And I spoke to somebody about this the other day. <laughs> how the game unfolded was the whole thing. We weren't set up. We weren't set up to, to stop the goals. We weren't set up to, to win the game. Yeah. We, two days prior to that, we played Bournemouth, Premier League team, who had near enough three starting 11s on the bench. Like They, 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 were, they had a full... 25 man squad yeah. um, we were down to the bare minimum playing in a, in a pre-season game I think our gaffer wanted to have the game because of Bournemouth massive team but this was two or three days before the first game of the season yeah. and I played 75 minutes and I remember the day after the game I was like I need to get my legs sorted hopefully I can recover and whatever obviously adrenaline and stuff takes over when you find out that you're starting the game but 
the feeling of going out into my first, I suppose, competitive debut, that that was unbelievable. I mean, there was like 8,000 fans there yeah. screaming the abuse you got. <laughs> uh, and we we actually went 1-0 up. Oh, it's Khan, free kick. And I remember, oh, it's bending one in. I remember my thinking, running over when he was celebrating my legs, I have knackered. And it was only 20 minutes gone or 15 <laughs> minutes gone. After that, it was a boiling hot day. And I don't know if I didn't if I, did I drink enough water. Did I do this? Did I do that? I, you could say a numerous, numerous of things. But we weren't at the races that day. And that's bottom line. But nevertheless, I suppose it's one that I've learned from. And and an experience that I'll carry with me forever. And I don't think anyone else can say, oh, I got beat 8 2 on my debut. <laughs> so, but still, it's still a good experience. I guess the thing on that day is because obviously that you came off at half time, is that right? Yeah. Half-time, was yeah. That, do you feel that you were, because it was your debut, that you were just sort of made the scapegoat for that performance? Because they weren't any better in the second half when you went off. Or was it because, as you say, you didn't feel quite right and maybe that was the reason behind it? No, I think. I think I may have been at fault for not solely my fault, but I remember getting done by Vassell. He, that ball got played over the top. He barged me. I got flat-footed, turned, got back, and he scored. So I think one one goal, maybe two goals, were were my were my fault. I do feel, like I say, I've never said it, but I probably was made out a little bit of a scapegoat. I was 19 at the time, first competitive league game. Manager maybe wanted to protect me a little bit. Yeah. I don't like I say, I I never never. I'd never be able to find out that answer unless he spoke to the manager at the time. But I don't think it helped me at the time. Like I was, I remember thinking, oh, like, I don't know if it's for me. Yeah. It's a tough, day, tough day. But like you say, it, stuff like that make you. Do you know what I mean? They can maybe not on the pitch. You, sometimes you can get a little bit nervous with stuff like that. But yeah. I think off the pitch, it made me more resilient and like, oh, do you know what? Like it's just football, and I think that's what a lot of young players need to think, oh, it's just football, it's not, you're not going to die. Yeah. You know what I mean? Fans, you get a lot of abuse from fans, but they're just passionate. As long as you have the same passion as them on the pitch, then they can't really say anything. Do you know what I mean? Win or lose. So it was tough, but like you say, it's one of them things that's happened and I laugh about it now. So <laughs> you have to, eight, two. <laughs> Well, it's, good. it's a good attitude to have to it because uh, as a lot of people have said that have been on here is that they let the pressure get to them too much in the early stages. So it's the right attitude to have it. It's just a game at the end of the day. That's the last few months have proven in particular. But I want to move on to your, your second low move, which was Notts County, because it was probably equally as weird for different reasons. And the main thing I want to ask you about the spell is being adjusted to a different position because obviously they were struggling and they ended up playing you in holding midfield for a little while. Was that yeah. a position you'd played in before? Were you used to it? How did that news come about? Did you expect it? <laughs> I, the last game I played in that position, we were playing in the FA Youth Cup and I was a first-year scholar. Yeah. And I played in centre defensive midfield and I got a red card after <laughs> about 60 minutes. So <laughs> the last time I played in that position wasn't great. But before that, I always like to... When you play in the lower leagues, coming from Swans and stuff, you don't really get the opportunity to pass the ball about. It's usually long ball and uh, everything. a lot of the balls played in the air, which probably, looking back, probably didn't suit me at all. I should have gone... I maybe should have gone to Holland or a lot of a lot of players now are going to Germany. Maybe yeah. I should have gone somewhere like that to, to develop football. And especially play from Swansea, a footballing team, to go and play in a League one, a league 2 side that just play long balls all the time. <laughs> Maybe not the best idea. Yeah, so the Harry Kill got sacked, who was my manager at the time, and the, the caretaker, what was, what was his name now? I got his face, I can't remember his name. Yeah. And he pulled me in and said, listen, you're going in centre midfield. I was like, what? <laughs> he said, well, we've got two centre-halves that just want to head it. And he said, I want you to play. So you get the ball off them and you, and you start things from the back. So I thought, right, okay, yeah, that sounds good. I can't remember if my first game was Cheltenham or it was Tranmere. Yeah, no, Ch- Cheltenham, we got my first game for Notts County was Cheltenham. We lost 3-0. Bad game. Not, not a great game at all. But then we started working on it that week after and it started to make sense. Like, I was just there to pick up second balls and be a bit of a a unit in in the midfield because a lot of players in that league some of them are tough some of them are small little players that can wiggle out of anything but 
he put me in there to try and win second balls and that's what I did and it, and it was effective for two, three, four games and I really enjoyed it, really enjoyed that position, especially when you're playing it with two lads behind you who are just going to head everything anyway. Yeah. So it wasn't, I didn't really have to win any second balls. <laughs> and then talk to me about Neil Ardley coming in then because unfortunately in the January you were then sacrificed so he could get in another player of his type due to the loan rules. Was that something that you yeah. knew was coming? How honest was that conversation and how did you find it again? To be fair to, to Neil, at the time I was gutted because I, I, I loved my, my time at, um, at Notts County. And even though things weren't going well, we were still playing good football. There was probably six games before the end of my loan spell that I thought, you know what, something could go on here because we could, we could have got out. I think if he, the way we were playing, we weren't playing games and getting battered. We were playing games and conceding sloppy goals. If we had eliminated them, it wouldn't have been the case where they got relegated. But I remember speaking to, obviously, I don't know if you know about the red card that I had, which was embarrassing, but I laugh about it now. I got sent off, then got banned for, I think it was two games. And then I remember coming into training one day and Neil said, oh, Kes, can I have a word? I said, yeah, so he said, look, he said, I do like you as a player and if under these different circumstances, I'd, I'd like to keep you. But with everything going on, he said, I need experienced players that are going to try and keep me in this league. He said, and I, I totally understand it. I totally understood it. it. I was young, just got sent off. They didn't need players like me that were going to cost them. We, the game was already done when I got sent off. But <laughs> if, he had, if I had gone into another game and done something stupid like that, 20 minutes, it would have been another, another three points lost. Yeah. And I get it. I was young. And I think you, you've got to respect him in his decision and obviously he brought in players and it didn't work but they seem to be doing well now so hopefully you can get them back at the league. Absolutely and I guess that brings us on to your final move and club for last season which was moving over to the Welsh Premier League for TNS. Now it's a really unique experience this and probably the first guest we've had on from the Welsh League because you're going to a club that's in a much smaller reputation league but a club that's playing Champions League, Europa League football in an opportunity you'll probably never get anywhere else in your career. How on, yeah. how on earth do you make that decision when there are other clubs probably interested as well? I think at the time for me to go to TNS was, was the best decision because I hadn't played that many games for your well, I hadn't played that many games for Notts County and I wasn't really established in the leagues. So I think going to TNS, when I spoke to the manager, I knew it was the right decision. I mean, you're playing Champions League football, yeah. you're playing Europa League football, you're giving me the opportunity to play week in, week out and get a run of games under my belt that I maybe wouldn't have got at League, League Two, yeah. League Two football at Notts County in the old world. So and I, I loved it last season. It was a brilliant season. And I know we were unlucky to win the league, but I think if the, if the games had restarted, we would have, been, we would have yeah. won the league because we still had to play Connors Key. But... Yeah, ultimately, it was the best decision for me and, and I, one that I'm glad that I did. And talk to me about the first time you played in the Champions League. What was that emotion like? That must have been a special moment. Yeah, it was. I mean, I remember the game, Ferrana Kelly, and they, they were chanting in the dressing room and <laughs> trying to do everything to put us off and yeah. screaming and shouting at us in the tunnels. And, and we knew that we were, we were going to play well because we played pre-season games against Shrewsbury Rangers and we played really good football. Yeah. And we knew that if we had played our game, the result would have been fine. But the whole atmosphere is like everybody's just... I don't think they played their music, but I remember walking out and I think I was playing the music in my head. <laughs> like the champion music. And it was, it was unbelievable. And especially when we went away to one of the games, Kosovo, that was against Ferrana Kelly. That was unbelievable, unbelievable game. Because the, the stadium was full. Yeah. The fans just setting off flares, the abuse you were getting. It, it was such a massive game. And then we went on to win 1 0 and qualify for the next round. And the relief and the like gasp of everybody after the game was unbelievable. Just the party that we had was just, <laughs> oh. You just couldn't couldn't write it. But yeah, I mean, the, the Champions League is what draws you to to teams like TNS. And I've enjoyed it, really enjoyed it. That's good. And there's one other question I want to ask you about TNS, which is the Scottish Challenge Cup. So there's going to be a few people that don't know about this. And I don't know how important or strange it was to you. 
but playing in a competition with sides from all over Britain that's labelled the Scottish Challenge Cup. Was that uh, an interesting moment for you or did that not really have an effect at all? I didn't really take that into consideration, to be fair. I think it was just uh, another game of football and we, we actually had a bit of a nightmare because the two boys got sick in the hotel the night before. Yeah. So everybody was like under the weather. We've done a lot of travelling in, in the short space of time. I think everybody was just knackered and didn't want to be travelling up and down the country considering we've just done like back-to-back three away trips on three consecutive weeks traveling to different countries yeah we went to scotland and it was it wasn't quite a weird game to fit because they were i think they were like league two or something in the scottish league and we were just like odds on favorite to win and we just i don't even know what happened i think they just scored off a fluky goal and then it was just backs against the wall we were trying that they went to extra time ball just wouldn't go in the net for us and i just think it wasn't meant to be but and tell me, the, the last question I want to ask on your, your league career is obviously moving to TNS this year. A lot is spoken about the standard of the Welsh League. How did you find it in comparison to playing in the English leagues? I, I was quite surprised, actually. Um, playing in the, the Welsh League, you have a lot of critics that will say that the league's not a, good, not a good division to play in, not a good league to play in. But playing week in, week out in it, you can see Welsh football doesn't get enough credit because it, the standard of the, the players, maybe maybe not as a collective as 11 players, but certainly five players from each team could go on and play in in full-time football in, in the English leagues themselves. It, it was a, a surprise to me, but I mean, the league the league itself is, is competitive and when teams play against TNS, they tend to put in yeah. five, 10% more than what they would if they were playing Cardiff Met or something. Yeah. So everybody wants to beat TNS, which is something you have to uphold and, and make sure you're at the races every week. I couldn't agree more. We'll finish off with a quick fire questions as it'd be rude not to for a pro. The best player you played with and against? Best player with would be Gilfi Sigerson. Best player against you know, few, probably Jermaine Defoe. Yeah, Defoe's movement was was unbelievable. He just one minute he's on your right shoulder, the next minute he's peeling off and sticking one in the stanch. So it'd be it'd have to be Jermaine Defoe. Two decent names there, to be fair. And then let's go for the best yeah. manager as well that you've worked under, or even just your favourite, if not the best. If Harry Kuehl had more time, I'd like to say Harry Kuehl, but I only play, ever played one game under him. But in terms of man management, it would have to be Harry Kuehl. No, uh, as a manager, Harry Kuehl, but as man management, I'd have to say my under-23s coaches at, at Swansea, Cameron Toshak and uh, Gary Richards, they were helped me so much in my development from youth team football to 23s football to men's football even. So I'd have to say them. Fair enough. And then the final question we always go for is favourite games. So as you're a pro, we'll let you have two. Your favourite game that you've been involved in as a player and then your favourite game just as a fan that you weren't involved in directly. I'd probably have to say the more recent game would have to be the Champions League game. I think the playing in Kosovo, knowing that we... We had to score to, to go through. Yeah. The odds were stacked against us. Like in the dressing room, their fans were banging the chairs, and it was it, the odds were just stacked against us. We just weren't meant to win the game. I think it was like the 70th minute, one of our lads scored, and we just erupted. We just knew that we had to hold on. I think that would that's probably the game for me. And what was the other question, mate? Sorry. Uh, the best game you've watched as a fan that you weren't involved in. Uh, best game I watched as a fan uh, was probably uh, we played Newcastle. It wasn't a Swansea game, I, although I could say five or six Swansea games and be unfair, <laughs> choose which one. So I'm going to say another game. We went to Newcastle. We played in the under 23s in a cup and in the league. So we played them on the cup, cup on the Monday. Uh, and Newcastle first team were playing a team on I think it was Norwich on the Tuesday. Um, and we had, a, we had a game on the Friday so on the Tuesday night John Joe Shelby who was a good mate of mine when he was there John Joe sorted a, a ticket for 10 boys to go to in a box and watch the game well if we did it was the best game I've ever watched it was <laughs> I think it ended 5-4 yeah. but Newcastle fans are unbelievable and we yeah. were in the box and the stadium was full Tuesday night screaming shouting you feel like you're so far away from the, the the pitch, obviously in the box, but when you look down and you can just see all the fans erupt every goal, it was like 
Newcastle scored, Norwich scored, Newcastle just went back and forth, back and forth. And then when Nor- uh, Newcastle scored the final goal, oh, everything just went wild. <laughs> it was unbelievable. So that would probably be the best game that I've been to. A perfect way to end, a brilliant game to finish on. We can't thank you enough for taking the time to join us and share your footballing memories with us. And hopefully, once we can get back to playing again, you'll have many more in the seasons to come. Thank you, mate. Thanks for your time.